Fetas plays an important role in the governance and management of all schools in South Africa, in the sense that there are so many legal aspects and governance matters in education of which most principals and educators still have limited experience. It is important for a school to be a member of FETSAS as not only are we the leaders in school governance and management, but we also train, inform, guide and advise all our members in best practice and experienced solutions. Who is FETSAS? FETSAS is the national representative organization for school governing bodies. FETSAS informs, organizes, mobilizes and develops its members to achieve and maintain the highest international standards in school governance and management. We advise within the public and private educational sectors, focusing on the foundation, intermediate and senior phases. A school's governing body or SGB operates primarily outside the classroom. It is the SGB's task to make sure everything outside the classroom is in shape that infrastructure, discipline, budgets, human resources and finances are efficiently managed. FETSAS can assist you with all the aspects of your school governing board's primary role, which is creating a conducive environment in the best interest of the school. Furthermore, FETSAS can assist in strategic planning, sound financial management and human resources aspects such as appointment, discipline and termination of contract processes. When dealing with appointments of principals, FETSAS wants to support you to appoint the best possible leadership candidates for your school, for the sake of our children. Be a part of FETSAS and know that you are part of a larger community that will always provide you with the latest information which is accurate and reliable. There is always someone within FETSAS who has the experience of past challenges and solutions, simply a call away. We at FETSAS will walk alongside you to take your governing body forward to achieve greater heights. FETSAS has extensive experience in education matters. As an active, dynamic organization, it is fully informed of developments and restructuring in the education field and can advise its members accordingly. FETSAS is a democratic, non-political organization and members elect their leaders along the lines of the national school governing body elections. What does FETSAS stand for? FETSAS believes in maximum autonomy for governing bodies and therefore strives to expand governing bodies' rights, competencies and skills. FETSAS supports and promotes governing bodies' powers and the rights as defined in the legal framework of the Constitution. South African Schools Act and Acceptable Governance Principles. Former State President Nelson Mandela said, Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Education is a great engine for personal development. Through education, the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor. Children of mine workers become heads of mines. The child of farm workers can become president of the country. Here at FETSAS, we do what we do because we love our children, we love our schools, and we love our country. We look forward to being of service to every school governing body in South Africa. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the session. Um, I see members have been coming through. Let me just do a few changes here. Apologize if there's a bit of screen jumping. We're just trying a few new processes today. Welcome to today's session. My name is Paul Rankin. I am from FEDSAS. As you can see, I'm the Corporate and Business Development Manager, um, and I've helped fly these um, online sessions that we're going to be going through the details today. Today, we are talking about talking with Too Simple. Um, Rian van den Berg is going to be leading the processes, going to be talking about how we have fun and tools for educators in the classroom. Um, just let's maybe pause a little bit and look around us. What is happening this week around us? Um, we know there's a lot of other concerns that I don't want to mention. Um, and I'll let you worry about what those are. 10th of June, is there or isn't there going to be a shutdown? We don't know yet from that side. But we do know the Bella Bill is open for comment. And that's just my little plug at the moment. Please make sure your governing bodies are aware that now's the time to comment on the Bella Bill. 
Um, it's a democratic process in working right where we are at the moment. So let's not um, say we didn't have the opportunity to comment. All the details that you need are on our landing page on the FedSAS website. And then it's three weeks till the break. Um, and then before that, there's a bit of a public holiday in between um, for some of us from that side. So that's kind of what the week is ahead of us or the next two weeks ahead of us from that side. Um, and with that, I'm going to ask Rian to come in onto the mic as well. Um, and I'll hand over to Rian. Rian, good afternoon from Gauteng. How are you there? Hi, Paul. Good Hi, Paul. to hear you. Good to see you. Uh, no hardy does in the background this afternoon. Yeah, it's good fun. Uh, the weather is great in Joburg. It's good to see so many familiar faces online. I've got the participants block open, so I'm seeing the, the notes. And someone that called me just uh, shortly before the event uh, is also in. So, Timika, welcome. This lekker om samen met allemaal te keier. Our tech talks are usually slightly bilingual. I see there's a lot of uh, mixed. Uh, well, We've got a mixed audience today, so we'll probably be in English as well because our speaker is also far more comfortable in English than in Afrikaans. So uh, bear with us. Maar baie welkom, baie dankie lid ons bykie in saam keier. Uh, ons gesels met um, Tim Holiday van Purple Mesh, Too Simple and Python in Pieces. I just want to share my screen quickly, go through a little bit of an intro because um, I found, uh, well, happily that Tech Talk is back. Hey? <laughs> uh, we've been taking a little bit of a break on um, Tech Talks over the past few weeks. I think uh, over the past year or so, we've been inundated with new events, new products. Um, and uh, yeah, we're happy to host uh, Too Simple and Tim Holiday today. Before we head into our um, session with Tim from uh, Too Simple, we're launching uh, or publishing our latest version of the Tech Talk magazine today. Uh, it's the BET uh, edition. Uh, we traveled to the UK in the end of March during the school holidays and visited the British Education and Training Technology Fair. Too Simple was also an uh, exhibitor there, and Tim from South Africa was with us at the show. We, we spent some time together, uh, and we've got some valuable information and some insights and some feedback for that. If you scan the QR code there, you'll find uh, the magazine to be viewed on your device. Uh, if you've got a phone or so, someone can just test that by, maybe. And then we're going to be publishing the download link or the online view link in the chat box. So if you copy that, uh, you can uh, just put it in a browser and you'll be able to read the magazine. So please give us a read and, and let us know if you found some value in there. The Center for Technology, how we work and what we do, we've been saying for many years now, and uh, it's more and more relevant. We've got to learn as we live. Our living spaces have transformed without even training, without even thinking about that. And as such, our learning processes, our learning environments, uh, whatever we do, just the spaces need to also look like our living spaces. I've got kids driving to school in a car with Bluetooth and they get to a classroom that has very little or less than that. We've got kids that um, have their own devices at home and they come to school and we've got all these barricades and rules against not going on the internet. And there are dangers and everything to that, but we've got to somehow integrate where and how and the date that we live in into our learning processes. So that's one of our big frames, uh, big aims, big goals to say, let's start learning continually as we live. Let's start learning in the same frame and same environment as we live. Our aim is to get uh, good advice to our members, is to look for good solutions in the market, to build a bridge between the industry and the schooling space, and sometimes there's a disconnect. So we're constantly looking for new solutions. On soek nieuwe oplossings for ons skole. Ons wil nie a klomp verkoopsmanne net nader bring nie. We want to have sincere and honest solutions that would make teachers' lives better in the classroom, that would make governors' lives better in, in the school, and that would make managers' lives better in the school. So we want to transform and improve schooling uh, and those learning outcomes. I want to share this quickly because it speaks to innovation. I read this the other day. Uh, there's a Harvard Business Review uh, report that says maybe Henry Ford didn't say this. No one gets it <laughs> uh, documented, but, but it seems like he said it. Um, if he had to ask his customers what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. And that was so typical. At that point in time, the only vehicle was the horse and the buggy. <laughs> 
And to move faster, you needed faster horses or a horse that could carry more people. And then Henry Ford said, no, maybe we should not polish the horse. We should look at a completely different solution. And I love that about innovation. Not always looking at, at what the people say as far as market research go, but innovate. And that's what I saw when, when I saw a lot of the uh, exhibitors at BET, but also in the two simple stable. They've been innovating for many years. Uh, I agree that we should also listen to our clients. And that's what I like about them saying they listen to the teachers. Teachers add to their product. So Henry Ford said you can have any color as long as it's black. <laughs> Maybe there he didn't listen to his clients uh, enough. Uh, but on the innovation curve, he brought something new. So that's what we're talking about today. Uh, I just wanted to leave that uh, as a disruptor and an innovating thought. We can't always just look for what the problem is. We've got to find a solution that's in a different realm. And we're going to be talking to Tim Holiday. Uh, Tim, you can open your mic and your uh, um, camera. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we saw each other in London. We saw each other in Linden the other day. So from London to Linden and now online. Uh, tell us about Too Simple. Uh, you've been around for a while in the UK and around the world. And maybe let's just share a little something of the journey. Um, about the company and, and your work in South Africa and then some of your products. Uh, we're looking at Purple Mesh and Python in Pieces, but welcome. Great, thank you so much, Rihanna. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate all of your time, all of you that are here. I see we do have a good mix of English and Afrikaans, so I do hope that you don't mind if I stick to English. Uh, when I do meet you in person, you're more than welcome to talk to me in as much Afrikaans as you like. Um, but right now, I'm going to just keep this to English. So thank you, thank you again. Thanks for being here. My name is Tim and I'm from Too Simple. Uh, Too Simple has been around for 22 years. We create educational software for primary schools. Uh, we've always been making uh, primary school software since uh, the beginning of our time, which was in uh, 2000. So when we started January 2000, so we're just over 22 year two years old this year. Uh, I think it's very important to know that Too Simple was founded by a teacher. So a teacher that was in the classroom decided that they wanted to uh, bring EdTech into the classroom and find really fun, innovative ways of teaching children technology, where it's not just using corporate products. So that's where, where we come from. And that's the reason why we're here. We've only been making primary school software for most of those years. Only in 2020, we launched a, a high school program called Python in Pieces. And um, that was a very, very bad time to launch a new program, by the way. So you may not have heard of that just yet, but I'll show you a little bit about it in a while. So I'm going to be talking about Purple Mash and Python in Pieces. Those are two main products that we sell in South Africa. And Purple Mash, let me quickly share my screen so you can all see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to assume that uh, it started sharing already. So I hope you're you can good. see it or you will yes. in a we couple of seconds. Excellent. So this is what the Purple Mash platform looks like. Uh, it, it came about about 12 years ago where we took everything that we had previously made on CD and we decided to put it online uh, before really online tech was a huge big thing. Uh, that became Purple Mash. It was just a collection of everything that we had made up to that point. And now we like to say that Purple Mash is a 12 year work in progress. So it's not something that was created 12 years ago and then just sits there. Every single day, we have lots and lots of people working with us uh, that supply or, or create content that goes onto Purple Mesh. We have our full development team, education team, graphics, design, everyone that's working on this platform. So I think it's important to know that you're getting something that's not stagnant. Uh, everything that we create on the Purple Mash platform, uh, just following on from what uh, Rian was saying about Henry Ford earlier and about asking his customers what they wanted, I thought that was a brilliant segue into talking about how we make the content on Purple Mash. Everything that gets put onto to Purple Mash, or the majority of it at least, comes from the ideas and feedback that we get from the users that use Purple Mash, which are now, I think, close to 9,000 schools that are using the program. So uh, we are always updating, always changing things to make it suitable for teachers in the classroom. So you're not getting a product that is made by a few people sitting in an office that don't know what it's like to teach. Uh, this is very much made for you as teachers and for the learners. So 
Having a, a quick look at, at the Purple Mesh uh, home screen that you can see here, there's far too much to go into in the next few minutes to explain to you what, you know, what the extent of Purple Mesh actually is. But a small breakdown is that it is a full LMS. So you can load all of your learners and your teachers onto the system. You can set work for your, for your learners. You can mark their work. You can print reports. Uh, you, can you can host uh, any of any of the uh, documents that you need to use for class, you can keep it in our work folder, which is basically like my documents or OneDrive um, or you know Dropbox or something like that. And you can also set anything external from Purple Mash uh, as a task for your kids that you can then monitor and mark the work afterwards. And it's all in one safe place. Um, as the LMS, you can see we can set tasks through Purple Mesh. So that's what I was saying. You can you can import external documents, or any of the the tools or projects that are already made inside the platform. You can also embed YouTube videos, as you can see here. You can add supporting documents, and you can really make this your go-to place to share information with your learners. Um, I. There's a lot to look at, so I'm going to try and just stick to to one or two things. But I think first can, of all, can just, I interject just a little bit? Yes, I, mean, I just wanted to clarify LMS. Uh, sorry, I'm no. going to do this. Of course, because <laughs> LMS is possibly a term that not everyone in the audience might know. So that's a learning management system, but that is not limited to the use only by a learner if the learner is on his or her own device. It's not. Is it just for an environment where where the learners and the teacher all have devices, or can the teacher use this as a program, uh, a platform, and the learners use it in the lab at school, or from home, or um, a worksheet that gets printed out? Um, can you just maybe clarify that? How, how does it make the learner's life easier, and how does it make the teacher's life easier? Brilliant. So that, that's those are great questions. Thank you. And I love being able to answer yes to everything that you've said. Um, it's my favorite thing about talking about this program is that all of the uh, projects that are on Purple Mash can be printed as printable worksheets. So they can be used on paper. You don't need to use the computer to, to do everything uh, project wise on Purple Mash. There are lots of tools that we can also print out things that you can make with paper. Um, this can be used at home and at school. You can use it in a school that has one-to-one -one devices for every single learner. You can also use it with learners that are sharing devices. There's a lot of collaborative work that goes on inside Purple Mesh. And for those of you that only have projectors in your classrooms or smart boards or any interactive board uh, in your class, you can use it that way as well. So you can use the platform in multiple ways. And I hope that, that answers that part of the question. Yeah, great stuff. Excellent. I think when we get to the end of this, we will be sharing a, a Calendly link where you can uh, you, you can book an appointment with one of us. We can give you a more in-depth demo of what Purple Mesh looks like, and you will then be able to answer, uh, ask a lot more questions, and hopefully more of those answers will always be yes, we can do that for you. All right. So to give you an example of what we're talking about when it comes to printable worksheets, if I had to open our topics area, you will notice that we have got hundreds of topics inside here that do relate to the work that you're doing in class. So I was going to mention just now, which I think is a good time to tell you, that it is not only for English speaking schools. So every single project that we look at here can be translated by a teacher. We have the feature inside the program where the teacher can translate anything inside the project, add their own voice to the project, and then save it and set it as a task in any language. It doesn't have to be Afrikaans. It can be any language that you can type on a keyboard, basically. Um, if we go into one of these projects, and we'll see this is inside Egypt. These are all the projects that we have on ancient Egypt. We have writing projects, postcards, uh, tools that we can use for uh, things like coding, mind maps, uh, all sorts of things that you can do in our tools area. We've got reading books and a whole lot of other things. But if I open a project, you'll see that by opening it, it'll always give me as a teacher the option to set the task or, or, or um, sorry, set it as a, as a task or launch it to have a look at it. You may have noticed some of you that are, I've got an eagle eye would have seen that little Google Classroom button there. We are fully integrated with Google uh, and Microsoft and we have a single sign-on with Snaplify. So if you do work with any of those companies, we can do single sign-on for you through any of them, uh, including that Share to Classroom if you Google and a Teams app if you are Microsoft. 
Okay, um, then having a look at what one of our projects looks like, you can see we have a little bit of content. We don't give you everything inside here because we still believe that the teacher does all the teaching in the class and we are just here to support you and help with the integration into technology. So without going too much into what I'm showing you here, please do call for a more in-depth in demo. But as a teacher, I can go into any of these projects and edit this, like I said, into any language. So here I can just change house to house. And if I wanted to go and print this as a worksheet, when I say print, it's going to ask me if I want to print the sentence starters. I will always say, yes, please. And then that becomes a worksheet that I can now print out and use it in my class without having to go anywhere near a computer. So we are also a massive resource uh, for teachers for any worksheet that you might want to use in class. And this is what the worksheet will print out like. It has got your template for you to fill in where you can get magazines if you want and cut out pictures and paste them on the piece of paper and a place for you to write. And then all of the questions that we would have had in the online um, interactive version, you can now have them as our separate page for a worksheet. So that is what our our writing projects look like inside Purple Mesh very briefly. There's about 20,000 uh, writing projects there currently. And as I've mentioned, you can customize them. So translate them or edit them to suit your class, which makes it an infinite bank of resources that you can either use in class or print. But because we don't have too much time, I'm gonna quickly show you that we have a tools area Tools is what we have been doing historically is too simple. As I've said, we've been making ed tech tools for kids to keep things very exciting while teaching uh, quite complex uh, issues in, in technology. So we do have a coding area where we have three different coding tools. Uh, we will teach all of your teachers how to use all of these tools, by the way. So if you've never taught coding before in your life and so that's something that you're doing, we'll stand by you the whole way and we'll teach you everything you need to know about teaching coding. Uh, for communication and sharing, we, uh, we have an email program. So we're teaching children how to, to use email. Um, by sending email in a really safe place. Same with our blogging program and our survey program. It's a full blogging uh, survey program is like Survey Monkey just for the kids. And as you can see, lots, lots and lots <laughs> of, of tools here that you can use. So all the way down to 3D game creation uh, where our learners can make their own music on the program. We have an animation program. We even still teach typing inside here, which I think is probably one of the most important tools that we have. So I'm going to jump, jump in there again. Uh, and Please. I hope the audience uh, appreciates that. Um, at the onset of lockdown, I remember you guys made your platform free for a few months. Uh, I was at home with a 10 and 11 year old. They might've been nine and 10. I don't know how long ago was lockdown. And I jumped onto this and um, two things that stood out for us in my own home was typing. So they loved learning the skill of typing. And, and I think that's something that schools don't make enough of. We all want to code, but no one's typing. <laughs> you know, we all want to, to do a lot of um, computational thinking, but we can't talk to the computer because we use one finger. And, and so the typing tu tutor, I think, is a hidden gem. Um, in, in Purple Mesh. And then my kids also love the 3D print uh, that's a cutout. So it looks like 3D printing, but without a 3D printer. And you manipulate this little, um, yeah, there we go, this little box, and it prints it out in a flat surface uh, with, you know, just using anything there. And, yeah, you know, maybe, do, yeah. And it prints it out with digit, oh, them, uh, thin lines. There we go. There's the print. The print version is bottom right hand there where you, but you cut it out and you fold it on the lines and the next thing you've got this paper cube. My kids loved it. And what I liked about that was it took from the computer, from the virtual world and put it back into a tactile physical world. Um, and, and, and as a parent that, that you know, my wife's an occupational therapist. So maybe that's why I'm wired that way. But that gave me so much value to have joy with playing with something that comes from the computer and not playing with something that's on the computer. So just wanted to browse on that. That was that was fun for me during lockdown. Thanks, Rion. I appreciate that. Um, it is nice to, to know what kids are actually using at home and in a classroom. So I do see that there are quite a few users of the Purple Mesh program uh, here today. So that's quite exciting to know. And I see we even have friends all the way from Australia. So hello to you. Um, so 
the the last thing I'm going to show you now, again, because we don't have time to go into the depth of what actually is inside Purple Mesh, is for those of you that do struggle with teaching technology, if it's not something that you, you're used to doing, I know historically we've often taken the sports coach off of the field and say, you look like you can teach computers and now you're the computer teacher. So I, I know that that is changing. Um, but if you do have situations like that, we do have a lot of hand-holding for you. So if you had to go into our teacher's area in our curriculum maps, we do have the CAPS curriculum grade R to grade seven, and this is mapped to show you how you can integrate the technology into specific aspects of your CAPS curriculum. So in here, we're in grade seven, it'll show you, for example, uh, inside natural sciences. This is the CAPS curriculum here with all of the outcomes and how we would link Purple Mesh projects to what you need to do in the class. And we've there given them to you by term and where they didn't exist previously, we've made them to match our curriculum. So that is available for any teacher that might be struggling or for schools that are new to integrating technology. Then we also have, uh, which is very nice to see, is our coding and robotics curriculum draft, uh, which a lot of people might not even know where to find this yet. So instead of needing to go to the DBE website and search around, we do have the whole draft that's on here for you to read. And if you wanted to go into any of these grades, we have already mapped Purple Mash and created all of the missing projects to uh, fully cover what is in that draft currently. So because, as I mentioned, Purple Mash is a work in progress all the time, anytime that draft changes, uh, we will change the mapping inside Purple Mash. And then when it does become policy, you will have already got everything that you need uh, in terms of software to do what you need to do to cover coding and robotics. Um, hardware is someone else's problem. But for software, we, we have got you covered. Um, I think that is everything I'm just, I'm going to tell you now about Purple Mesh because otherwise I won't stop and you will all need to leave at some point. So uh, unless, well, let me see if Rian has anything, anything to, to share first before I move on. Yeah, I wanna jump in here. Um, <laughs> I did not show the audience my, uh, e-magazine that's being published today i just shared it in the link if you quickly stop sharing i want to just share mine and just uh show show a page or two of the e-magazine but we can um maybe just add on to this on page 22 and 23 of our e-magazine there's a testimonial from rindell primary that uh, uses uh purple mesh there's also a, a testimonial uh, of reckoners primary so yeah just want to quickly show you our, our e-magazine and how we are bringing new members to the to the fray and uh, what's in the magazine. But you can read more about Purple Mesh in that magazine as well. So the download link and the view link is in the chat box for now. And then you can jump on to um, something um, else, Tim. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't like seeing my face everywhere, all over magazines and adverts for webinars. So. Uh, it's an interesting thing to see. So I, I do hope that I've given you enough to think about uh, to possibly contact us to look more into Purple Mesh for now, because I do want to move on to Python in pieces. So uh, Tim, can I just summarize yes, in Purple Mesh? Maybe yeah. um, what 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 we found um, teachers need to know what we're solving at their school. Managers need to know what we're solving at the school so that they pay. If you can summarize. Uh, does it save the teacher time or how much time can it save a teacher? <laughs> um, does it make class uh, a little bit more fun and, and enriched? What, what is the core three ingredients that, that you bring to the party for, for a school to consider Purple Mesh? So, uh, yes, I would say we absolutely do save teachers time. Um, that is one of our main aims when we create everything we do inside Purple Mesh. So, some of the ways we save teachers time is by having thousands of pre-made activities there for them uh, the ability to set the tasks within the program that you are already in and to make changes inside that program without having to save things outside of that. Um, also with that when work gets handed in the program does a lot of auto marking for you so if you set tasks that do have answers already in the task the uh, the platform will mark the work for you and just give you the result uh, and when it comes to to printing reports everything is there in, in one area 
And because we make all of our own software, we don't have any third party plugins. Uh, everything is in one very safe area and you don't need to start going around and searching the internet to pull bits and pieces of information in. And I didn't show you inside our topic activities, Inside every single one of those topic related projects, we do have the clip art, the word bank, the pictures, everything that do relate to a single, a single project. So we are um, kind of encouraging our, our learners not to go uh, you know, on a, a wild chase of images on the internet, uh, which does again, save you time. And most importantly, for those of you that are here in our teachers area, we have the computing scheme of work, the CAPS curricular mapping with all of the links to that. And inside professional development, a place where you can book a 15 minute one on one chat with us while you are in the program if you have any questions. So you can be there, need to ask something, go and click on that little link, book a meeting for whatever's convenient for you. And that whole entire process uh, over time will save you days uh, as a teacher. So uh, yeah. yes, <laughs> and I forgot your next question. No, no, I think you've covered it all. I'm, I'm happy with it. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, making things fun for, for kids in the class. That is literally our number one goal. So I think we do that and you'll see it the more you look at Purple Mash. Good. Excellent. Now um, I'm going to, do I have five minutes left, John? You've got uh, seven minutes left. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to- and we, we want to encourage them to ask questions if any. Uh, yes, we will please. post in the in the chat box uh, the links to. I'll, I'll start posting the links to the Calendly as well as your um, website. But you you've got good seven minutes and more to to go for it. Excellent, thank you. So I'm going to then jump into our Python in Pieces program. So Python in Pieces is for our senior phase and high school learners. Uh, you will see it does look a little more mature than Purple Mash does. Uh, there are things, by the way, in Purple Mash that you can do to change the layout. I know my ADD kicked in a little bit now, but just to show you that uh, you can you can change the background so you can make it look like a younger platform. You can change it to make it look like it's for more grown-up children. You can remove the earliest button from certain grades so that uh, the older learners do feel like they are in a more suitable area for themselves. So those are the kind of things that have come from uh, feedback from teachers, by the way. So there you, you know that. Now, moving into Python in Pieces, um, Python in Pieces, like I said, is our newest uh, addition to the Too Simple uh, suite of software programs. And this came about from the need to encourage our kids to move from block-based coding to written code. Right, so this is based solely around Python. Uh, so if you would like to get your kids to start writing in Python at some point, it was made specifically for that gap between grade seven and grade 10, where we, in primary school, a lot of the schools that are managing to teach coding in primary school will use block-based uh, programs like R2Code that's inside Purple Mesh or, or any of the other uh, block-based solutions. And then there's this strange gap where nothing really happens in IT up until grade 10, where you say, now you need to decide if you're going to do IT or not. And um, we've made this to try and bridge that gap and start the transition from block to text. So. We've created it so it's very, very easy to use. This is why it should take me only four minutes to explain to you what it is, is uh, it only teaches Python. It's not like Purple Mash that does a lot of other things. You've got level one, two, and three. In every single level, uh, you've got six lessons and in every single lesson, you've got nine activities. So there's about 16 and a half hours worth of instruction video inside Python and Pieces, where you as the teacher, don't need to know anything about teaching Python at all. You can follow, you can go into the data and make sure um, how far your learners have gone in the program. You can go and reset levels if you think they've used too many hints, which is a nice thing that we have is giving um, your learners hints so that they don't need to ask you too many questions. And the point of Python and Pieces, as I said, is to transition from block to code. I keep repeating that. But by showing you on a single screen, um, the block code and the syntax. So anything that you change in the text side of Python and Pieces will change the blocks and anything you change in the blocks will change the text, which is very unique um, and you won't find many other places. 
uh, along with the lessons that are already made there for you that you don't actually have to teach Python, this makes this a one-stop shop for you as a, a non-specialist or even a specialist to teach your kids Python. So if I had to take this block away completely, just to give you a very basic example, you can either bring in the block as you would generally do um, with block-based coding. And in real time, it's gonna show our learners on that side what is inside the block. So if I decide to say, you know, this example is gonna tell us to write hello world, which is standard. If I had to break the block on the right-hand side, you'll notice that, uh, sorry, break the text, you'll notice that the block is now broken on the left. So we can start to problem solve in real time and see, you know, the changes that happen when you're actually writing code. Uh, and then without going into too much more detail, you will see that once you've completed a certain task and you run it, it will run through the task uh, as needed and then it will ask you to assess the work. Then there will be a system assessment where it'll tell you that you've done what it's asked you to do and then a self-assessment. And then the self-assessment that runs through the whole program is to stop our learners from just clicking next, 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 next without actually focusing on what's going on. So it's going to always tell them to look around the screen, notice where things have gone, where your output window is and so on. And then they would assess themselves, stage complete and move on to the next where they would get a new video and a new task to do. Um, and that then runs all the way into eventually getting to our free code area where in level one we want our learners to to um, hopefully write 20% um, of the written code and use 80% of blocks then level two 50 50 level three we would prefer them to be using 80% written code and 20% blocks and then you've got your free code project where you can code uh, anything that you'd like where python pieces also has a graphic interface on it. So you can create all the graphics for your game or your program inside Python without having to go anywhere else. And then ending off, uh, sorry, there is also a microbit simulator. So if you wanted to start doing a basic robotics, you can export to a microbit or use a simulator if you don't actually have devices. And then we have the showcase where if our learners have made some code that they really like, you can look at what they've written and they've created games and they can upload the games to the showcase, which is a really nice thing to do. And then just in my 30 seconds, I've got to finish off on Python in Pieces. Um, some very nice feedback that we've gotten on Python in Pieces is that we've had more girls signing up to learn IT after using the Python in Pieces program because it really opens their eyes to show them how creative programming can be. And it's not just kids that love maths that do programming, you really have a nice creative output. So we found that girls really like it. And we've also heard that a lot more um, art and drama students are looking at IT than ever before. So that's quite an exciting thing for us because again, raising standards through creativity being our motto, we want to make sure that we are showing how creative you can be using technology. And I think we've done that uh, with something that's generally seen as not so uh, creative to an outsider of programming. Tim, two questions came in. The one question was about um, show us how to print again, but let's do that one next. Uh, sure. We saw who's in the audience at the beginning um, and uh, you showed us two products. Talk, talk, talk to us about the age uh, appropriateness, purple mesh, more towards primary school, but um, block coding, typing, some fun things could be relevant for for lower grades in the high school, I think, as well. But what is your experience? And then Python in pieces, who f which product focuses on which audience? Perfect. So uh, Purple Mash was created to be used in primary schools. So we do cover the whole of primary school. It it often depends on how much technology you already do in the school as to how far you can use uh, the program going forward. So Purple Mash is aimed at primary school from grade R to grade seven. There's many other countries that uh, that use Purple Mash for much lower than grade R uh, and in preschool even from two years old, but that's 100% uh, up to the teacher that's using it. And Python in Pieces was created for high schools. We found Python in Pieces has been used in some schools in South Africa from grade five moving up, uh, but obviously it has its sweet spot going from grade eight, nine, 10 and beyond. And we have people using Python in Pieces after school, which is an interesting thing we found out uh, where people are writing Python code and using Python in Pieces as a backup. So 
Um, that would be my answer to that. Just going back to purple mash, it, it is often, it, it's a misconception that purple mash is only for the lower grades in primary school. And uh, some people think that it looks a little bit too colorful and things like that. They, they uh, just see what it looks like. But because of some of the tools that are inside purple mash, it can be pushed all the way up to grade seven. And again, sometimes beyond, depending on the level of understanding that your learners have of technology at the time. So we do, we do all block-based coding uh, and some extra code, but some of the things that are used for all the kids, we do surveys, blogging, um, creative story writing, which in, introducing hyperlinking and um, sprite manipulation. So it borders on some code. And if we go to our new program that we are busy making now, um, I'm not going to open to show you, but it is a it's a data program. So it's teaching our kids how to sort and filter through data that will then introduce them to SQL programming, which you can't do if you don't know how to sort and filter through data. So we, we do go all the way from something that looks like this for your preschoolers uh, to, sorry, that's over there. that is our, our preschool program called Minimash. Uh, everything inside there is clickable. I'm not going to get go down that road now but uh, that's from preschool all the way to data manipulation and sorting and filtering and then stepping into high school going into python and pieces and you can take python and pieces as far as you'd like to take it in high school because it does have the free code option you don't have to mm -hmm. stop after the lessons i hope that answers your question that answer is it but um did i hear correct that some of the Py uh, some of the purple mesh functionality functionality is also still relevant for the early grades uh, it's not necessarily grade dependent it's maturity level of use of computers and exposure so it's, it's not like all grade eights in the country are the same as far as exposure um, experience uh, and, and access goes so so that would even still be relevant did i hear that uh, absolutely 100 percent so i sorry i was just q a box there's some more questions coming in oh the, the print one someone just said please repeat the print out process Maybe just talk us through it. It's anything that you print, it just renders into a PDF um, and then uh, you just print it off. Yes, 100%. So while I'm opening this, I'm just seeing, um, I, th I think it was Jonathan's question that we that we answered just now. He's asking about grade eight and nine. That is where we've seen the most usage of Python pieces is grade eight and nine. Uh, and also because it's only been out for two years, we don't know what's gonna happen after grade nine. The kids might be going, you know, using it much, much further. So uh, if I go to the a project, so I'm just, sorry, that was a bit fast that I went to this area, but I'm going, I went into my topics, open any project that you would like to use. And when that project opens, it seems like mm -hmm. I'm having a bit of an internet issue. There you go. This project is now open. You'll see that this does have a completely different template. If you would like to, uh, as mentioned, change any of the language of your questions, we're in teacher view now. Again, this is one of those things that saves you time as a teacher. You can see pupil view by clicking there or uh, learner view so that you can see immediately what your end product is going to look like. And then we're going to click on the three lines on the top of the screen and then down to print. It's as easy as that. But then when it opens that dialog box, always remember to change that from no thanks to yes, please, which will then show your sentence starters. Then it just generates a PDF that you could then save or print immediately. So you can you can right. also save it, send it to the learners by which other platform you wish to and tell them, you know, annotate on the PDF if you wish. Um, if, if you don't have all the tools at the school, the PDF is usable even on a WhatsApp. Um, yes. That's what we found in, in lockdown learning. Tim, so that's great. Um, now something in Afrikaans, just, just a last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. Just say thank you. Bye, donkey. Um, bye, donkey. Bye, Tate. Bye, like a bit like Tim and I share a few things, not just uh, taking uh, education. Uh, we travel to bed together, but then we both learned that we're uh, avid um, weekend musos. He's got his guitars behind him. Uh, he also plays the drums like I do. And so, yeah, there was a lot of meeting of minds. Tim, thanks for your time. I think you are solving problems for schools, and that's what we want to aim at. The Center for Technology really needs suppliers in the market that innovate, but also listen to the schools. And that's what we've been hearing from some of your from of your schools, uh, the users in the school. 
uh, I think you mentioned over 9,000 schools worldwide having the joy of um, purple mesh or two simple products. And I think that's a massive impact that you're making in education. Um, we're going to close uh, the session. I don't see any new, there's suddenly a new Q&A. Tim, you can stop sharing for us and then we'll uh, be bigger on the screen. The question is, are there reading lessons included? Quick one. I was going to stop sharing, but just while that question is there, if you go into our reading area, um, we've got where to serial mash. That is our library that has about 200 books in it. And then all of the related publishing activities here where you can write book reviews, fact files on books, uh, you can create your own comics, all of those kind of things. Uh, when it comes to actual uh, lessons, every single book that we have in the serial mash area is uh, all of our new books are, are, are audio books, but they're audio books and reading books, but every single one of these books is uh, split into their chapters and every single chapter does have related activities. So it has printable questions that you can use in class or um, activities that you can do on the computer. So that uh, I, I hope that's sort of going to answer your question. Oh, good question. Are you working on a purple mesh for high schools too currently? <laughs> <laughs> that is probably one of uh, the most common questions uh, I hear you. that we have, right, but uh, a... not not currently. <laughs> but okay. we quick, do have Python and pieces. Quick one. How does a school, number one, uh, get hold of you? The, the two simple websites is in the chat box, and then there's the Calendly link. Great. So my personal email address is tim at two simple.co.za. It's the number two and then the word simple. Uh, you can also mail if you want someone far more efficient to uh, deal with your requests. You can mail megan at two simple.co.za. And uh, Megan will be able to point you in the, uh, in the right direction to uh, get the answers that you want. Or you'll find there's a Calendly link in the chat. And by using Calendly, it really just eliminates the middle person and you can book a meeting with one of us directly at a date and time that suits you. Brilliant. Tim, can regular schools afford Purple Mesh? Um, schools are going into a budget cycle. Uh, is, it looks so extensive. It looks like you've got far more than an hour uh, of demo to do if you just click on every button. But uh, what, what can a school do to onboard Purple Mesh? Uh, perfect. So Purple Mash, I'd, we do like to say it's, it's is very affordable, um, if we may say so. If you have over 300 kids in your school, we only charge you 100 Rand per user per year. So it works out to be around 8 Rand a month per learner. We don't charge teachers for schools that have licenses. Um, the only extra fee on top of that is a 3,000 Rand setup fee, uh, which includes us doing an integration with um, your MIS if you have one. And yeah, that's, that's it. It's 100 Rand per learner per year uh, for well, as many kids well, as you well, have. Thanks in your class yeah. yeah and that includes yes. all of our our help for the year we'll never just dump you with something and see you next year we are always available to help but rather have the discussion with tim to see uh then walk away because it, it looks so overwhelming that there's so much there that it must be expensive but i think <laughs> that's very that's very good value for money and saving teachers time or making teachers more efficient is what the budget is about and that budget talk is tomorrow uh, feta is running two budget uh, school budget workshops i'm actually presenting uh, as well in those so tomorrow afternoon look at the budget workshop and a big number in budget is that of salaries and if salaries are more efficient you are getting more bang for buck in your school and in your school budget. So just a note to that. Tim, I um, uh, want to thank you. Bye, donkey. Uh, thank you for sharing with us. I think we'll do one of these again or do short snippets of those on YouTube. Today is on YouTube. Uh, it will be on Facebook shortly if you want to have the rest of your um, staff or even parent community look at that. There's a question, can parents use it too for their children home? Yes, <laughs> we did. If so, is there a cost to that? Uh, Jonathan, I think um, we'll... Tim, do you have 10 seconds? Can, can a parent on board privately? Uh, yes, you can. It is a little bit uh, more costly than if a school buys it. it. It's around, if I remember correctly, I think it's 950 Rand a year for a single user. And that's if you're not with a school. But if your school does have access to Purple Mash, you get it 100% at home at no extra cost. Yeah, brilliant. 
All right, Tim, we're going to um, stop there. Otherwise, we, we're never going to end this. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thanks for sharing with us. Uh, we're happy to have you as a new Diamond member in the Center for Technology. It seems like you've got a great solution. Uh, and, and I hope um, we, we really do all well with this. I want to, want to end with a quick plug. All our listeners, viewers, uh, Paul, maybe you can share that Bella story again. I think this is critical. By the 15th of June, we need schools to comment on changes in education law. Um, uh, the FEDSAS comments are on the website, and if you want to add to that, but make sure that we that we take education in our country seriously and that we add value to that. So I'm going to hand over to Paul to close. Um, Tim, thanks so much. Thanks to the audience. Thank you for all that ingeskakel het en gekyk het. Baie dankie. Jy leer die contact besonderhede daar or reach me at tech at fedsas.org.za. Take care. Paul, over to you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, thanks, Tim. Baie dankie daarvoor. Um, dankie vir die bywoning van allemaal. Dis lekker om allemaal hier so weer te sien of, of online te sien. Net, just to remind you, and I just have to say thanks, Rian, for just going through it again, but please, folks, make your comments felt. I've put the um, uh, FEDSAS uh, email address in the box as well. There are details of our provincial managers, but please get, get hold of that detail on the FEDSAS website. It's important that as many individuals as possible make comment. Um, a poll is all great, or a or a, um, a signed document by 2 million signatures is great, but that's seen as one comment, folks. So we need as many comments as possible going into that. You will see on our Facebook page, we've got a few videos running. Um, Jean-Ne van Amerwe and our CEO, Jaco Deacon, are running videos there with regards to where our concerns are. Please direct your governing bodies to those. We've only got yeah, just under a week left um, um, to get those comments in. So I really appreciate it if we could just push all those from there. Thanks, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your involvement today. Um, and thanks for being on board with us today. Have a good afternoon. Cheerio. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.